There we go. Hello, and welcome back to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. I am again the one and only Hobo Tom. And since I made a whole bunch of videos this week, I'm kind of feeling the effects of it, and I do have to wake up early tomorrow. So this will be a very quick show, I promise you. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And with that being said, with next week, I'm doing one, two, three, four shows. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to keep this one fairly short, straight, simple, and to the point. And I'm here again. The reason why it's going to be short, simple, and to the point, it was SmackDown. And this was an amazing show. I think I was pretty spot on with Raw. I know from listening to other people, I think they had the same quibbles I did. Um, again, I'll call it good when it's really good. And overall, I forget if I mentioned this, but, but Raw was, I think I said fun. Again, at both ends, that whole middle area is just so... Uh, Sometimes. Never the case on SmackDown, though. SmackDown was action-packed. In fact, if anything, it was just a little slow at the beginning. Again, there's always something you can quibble about. So let's start off with some SmackDown. So we have the contract signing between Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan for Fastlane. And kind of your standard, standard contract signing. Daniel Bryan is just sitting there at the table. All relaxed. Uh, Rowan's just behind him. And then he come out. Mm. And of course, the crowd is chants, Co feet, Co feet, Co feet. Uh, Shane starts to talk about that. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Vince McMahon's music hits. He's like, You're not the man, Kofi. Kevin Owens is the man. Kevin Owens makes his debut and he looks terrific. Sits down, signs the contract. The New Day is totally upset. And that was pretty good. Um, I think my only other quibble is that I think Sheamus was supposed to take on Johnny Gargano. But that did not happen, though. Instead, of, we have the Hardy Boys, the returning Matt Hardy. Which is always a good thing. And they're in that Carolina, they're in that Carolina area. And he's from that area. And I'll tell you what, Matt Hardy looks a lot better. He looks a little thinner. I hope his back's feeling a lot better. Probably just that time off was probably something that he needed. And they were facing the bar. Again, Matt just looked better. He looked healthier. I like the fact that he had a new delete thing. Crowd still likes it. Can't delete. Oh, I forgot to mention a lot of waters out there because Vince McMahon in the previous thing got wooded. Anyone who tried to speak got wooded. It was always good to see. It's a very simple chant. Some people say, oh, it's terrible. Now, let the crowd get what, especially if they're going to be the heat. They deserve to get wooded. But again, Matt Hardy again, he has the, the, the new delete thing. I think he was seeing the chops delete. Delete chops. And again, he did the classic delete along the turnbuckle pads. I mean, it's I could I could spend probably 20 minutes going through this whole match. Fortunately, I want to keep my promise to you folks. And only spend at least at, at most 20 minutes. On this video, maybe a little bit more when I start to do the editing processes. But yeah, this was fun though. The amazing, they have amazing tag team acumen, amazing tag team chemistry. I mean, granted, they are brothers, so they really should have that. Um, again, the, just the way the, the flow was was really good. That's not that's not to take away from the bar. Again, the bar, very classic heel tag team work. If you're stuck in their corner, there's going to be a distraction, and then the other guy will, will just lay into him. 
again, very classic work. I'll tell you what, I this was a really good match. It was a fun match. Again, I could spend 20 minutes talking about this match, but I only have 20 minutes to do the whole show. So the Hardys won. Um, with Matt doing the twist of fate and then Jeff doing the Swanton Bomb. Again, a whole bunch of Jeff still doing as this crazy off the top rope stuff. Matt not so much. A couple times I think Matt kind of held back a little bit. Instead of going to the top rope, he go to the sec second rope. Trust me, I've been on both ropes. Up rope, you look down, you're like, whoa. And after a while, you're like, you know what? I'm going to tranquilo. The second rope's going to deliver just enough impact for what I want to do. But the Hardy Boys went over. Again, really fun match. I don't think Cesaro and Sheamus have had a bad match since they became the bar. The Hardy Boys are the Hardy Boys. This is a very good surf and turf quality match. Then the next segment match was Our Truth. Our Truth is still funny. He can still wrestle. He comes out. He says, "I'm going to be like John Cena," and he's going to open a U.S. Open challenge. And he's like, "He said, I'm going to have a U.S. Open challenge." Looks around. Looks at Carmella. Looks around. How does that work? Obviously, he's never seen the old TV shows. But um, what happens is that Andrade, the Open challenge was issued. And of course, there was a dance break, of course, a seven second dance break. It was better during their mixed match tag team matches, but I, I can deal with it a little bit. It, it is, at least just to me, getting a little bit old, though. So Andrade comes out with Lena Vega. He's there being swaggy, taking his time, saying, I'm going to get the belt. Unbeknownst to him, Rey Mysterio Jr. runs from gorilla position, jumps in the ring first, and eventually Andrade almost does catch up, goes in the ring. Truth is like, what's going to happen? You, you, me. Yeah. What would John Cena do? So what would that be? WWJC. Now, what would I do? Yeah. So, so oh, let's have a match. And it became a triple threat match. This was another fun match. Uh, most of the match, our truth really didn't get involved. It really highlights Andrade seeing Almas. I'm not, I'm not, he's always going to be Andrade Almas to me. And Rey Mysterio, again, picking up their feud. Which is what it should be, because I can understand, okay, they need to take a week off. Especially it was right after a pay-per-view, right before and after a pay-per-view. And there's all kinds of other stuff going on. So with that, I can I, I can understand that. So really focus a lot more on Andrade Cien Almas and Rey Mysterio. But when he had to get involved... Our truth got involved, and again, he still has pretty good moves. Oh, that was that great, amazing drop kick when Ray was sliding to the outside to land on our truth, and Andrade almost kind of like kicked him, and he he actually moved like a couple feet to the side. That was awesome. Again, you put Ray Mysterio in any match, it's going to be amazing action. Uh, Andrade Almas, again, he and he and our truth had their spots very pair of more striker type wrestlers. It was a fun match, though. I couldn't really fault it. But even our truth got wetted. And then he started channeling John Cena and I was like, oh, no. At least he didn't do the five moves of doom. He did the five knuckle shuffle. And I could deal with that. So again, overall, though, this was a fun match. 
again, Andrade and Ray, they can do no wrong in the ring. This is really a surf and turf match again. Then Charlotte Flair comes out, cuts a promo. Even she starts to get wadded. She's like, yeah, whatever. And then the crowd's like, oh, no, 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 no. We shall be heard. Becky, Becky. It's like, I can't hear you. So that was pretty good. Again, typical heel promo. Charlotte can do no wrong on the, on the mic. She's definitely her father's daughter. The next match was Alistair Black and Ricochet versus Rusev Nakamura. Shinsuke must have had some flashbacks to New Japan because he was delivering some heavy strikes, especially when he and Alistair Black were in the ring. Not so much with Ricochet because Ricochet, when it was Ricochet and Nakamura, Shinsuke would get in his strikes, but Ricochet would always do something. He's that step or two quicker. Oh, and if you noticed in the little bar where it said the wrestlers' names, it was not the hashtag, but at King Ricochet. So that was pretty cool. So I wonder, oh, I know what title I'm going to give this. Cool. So I saw that and I kind of, I'm like, whoa, I like that. Because. I mean, I remember him as King Ricochet in New Japan and WCPW, and even further back as Prince Puma for Lucha Underground. So again, that was kind of cool. I mean, Ricochet, he knows how to sell an injury. For about 90% of the match, he was selling a leg injury. Because again, if you're going to ground a high flyer, just like Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev really tried to do, they went after his legs, and that made sense. So he kind of slowed things up a little bit, especially if you saw his match when he was facing Leo Rush. He just seemed that slower. Again, it was Leo Rush. Dude, Leo Rush is like 10 steps quicker than everyone. Ricochet is 9 steps quicker than everyone. So again, very minor thing. Um, again, Rusev. Rusev's pretty strong. And he tried to go for the accolade on Ricochet. He kind of went out the back door. So that was pretty cool. Again, he, he showed his half more as his power move set against Alistair Black. That really works because there really is a, a size and a weight difference between the two. Not some, uh, Shinsuke, I think, is the, was the taller, tallest of the four competitors. Eventually... Again, Ricochet can still do the flippy, flippy stuff. Nakamura is just harkening back to his days in New Japan Pro Wrestling with the striking between him and Aleister Black. And Aleister Black's finisher, that Black Mask, that's going to be one of those moves that replaces the RK out of nowhere. Because all of a sudden, bam, he hits a Black Mask on Shinsuke Nakamura, match over. And it's always fun to see, especially if you have that unique of a finisher where it can come out of nowhere at any time. It's always good to see it actually come out of nowhere and at any time. And of course, he always does the flip in the ring. Uh, he and Nakamura had an change early on in the match where he did a backflip and went down to a seed position. And he just looked like he was enjoying himself. I don't know. No other way to say it. Again, this was, um, again, Sir Black and Ricochet went over. Another surf and turf quality match. Then you have an AJ Styles promo. Um, he talks about how he's going to get back on top. All of a sudden, Randy Orton appears out of nowhere. Ugh. I have to be careful. Randy Orton might, might come through that door, and my cat might come out that door, and 
RKO me. So I'm sleep over that. But he's just like, what house? Again, AJ, AJ Styles, AJ Styles. Um, SmackDown is a house that AJ Styles built. He obviously doesn't know Randy's or Orton's history about burning down houses. So, and he's like, what house? I burned down. Um, then you have a little bit of a Roman Reigns recap. And it's good to see Joe and I doing his best against cancer. He is in remission. Always a good thing. And then the main event of the evening. You had Kevin Owens and Kofi Kingston, because Kevin Owens did want to kind of mend fences a little bit with Kofi. So he and Kofi Kingston teamed up to face Rowan and Daniel Bryan. And Kale looks good in the ring. Um, he looks like he lost some weight. Again, Kofi's reaction, priceless. Um, Kevin Owens, again, versus Rowan. Man, Rowan's a strong, big, strong dude. I think once he actually did Kofi Kingston, I'm coming off trying for a splash. Again, Rowan has that great heel moveset as that true brutish, strong heel who's just going to punch you a lot. Um, splashes, uses his body weight against you in a smart fashion. Um, Daniel Bryan's more of the tactician. The ring general, again, with the boot, they always wind up going into the ring post or getting tossed around to the steps somehow. But they always run to the steps because the other guy just steps out of the way. Um, but again, Daniel Bryan, he sells those movesets. Um, he hit that great superplex. Um, he took a roll-up pin from Kofi and turned into the yes lock, whatever he calls it now. The the one submission he uses. I mean, it was fun though. I mean, Kevin Owens can also still fly and do his flippy stuff. I like that. I as much as he did in pro wrestling guerrilla or more so in the indie scene as Kevin Steen. I forget if he was in Kara or not. I know Sami Zayn was. I think Chikara was just the East Coast version of pro wrestling guerrilla, which was primarily. Oh, wow. Man, this was a really fun match. Told the story. Um, Kofi Kingston was the reluctant partner. Kevin Owens is like, hey, I'm taking the fences, even though I'm getting the title shot. So it'll be interesting to see what happens for Fastlane, because that's in two more weeks. So next week would be the go home show. Would it be? Let me take a look at my calendar. Sears. So, we're here. Yeah, next week would be the Go Home Show. So I guess it's going to be on March 10th. I'll have to do some research and look it up. But yeah, this was a really fun, good match. And again, this is a f amazing surf and turf quality match. And again, um, KO and Kofi kicks him over. Kofi very reluctant to get his hand raised again. He wasn't with the New Day, so that's kind of understandable. And that was SmackDown. Woohoo! 19 minutes and 4 seconds. It's probably a record. I know. I've been kind of ranting and raving. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching um, for the last kind of 45 seconds. Next week's schedule is going to be kind of interesting because Monday it's going to, I finally got to take a break from YouTubing it. Again, I don't get paid, so this is my weekend almost from YouTubing. Again, I was pretty busy last weekend. 
So again, Monday going to have the Monday Night Raw review. Tuesday, Mardi Gras. Woohoo! So I'm going to do both a SmackDown review probably later. Probably be up by Wednesday. And then also Tuesday morning-ish, I'll put up my Mardi Gras wrestle. Where, again, we go back to the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League wrestling. And we see what happens with, see what happens there. Again, that's, then I'll take some time off. And the next one will be the Easter celebration. That's always good. And then Wednesday, so, so Wednesday morning, I'll probably put up the SmackDown. It's typically when I do it, because I do it Tuesday nights. And then Wednesday night, or and or Thursday, every day I really have time, it will be my one-year celebration being here on YouTube. So I'm going to put a, a one-year retrospective of some videos, some pictures, some events I've been in or been to. Yeah, well, I'm definitely in videos. So, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching YouTube. Again, all 33 subscribers, thank you so much. Um, everyone else who actually just spends a couple seconds, maybe a minute or two, I'd like to thank you very much because it's kind of kept me going for one entire year. I'm actually amazed that I started this off in the first place. So to be on and still active on YouTube for a year, it's kind of amazing. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and have a good night. Bye.